this one gentleman who's promising, you know, what's called partial insemination. And then he's going on to uh, obviously do full sexual intercourse with the person and his justification is that basically they've kept their top on. So because they've agreed to keep their top on, even though it's sex, clearly sex, it's, yeah. A booming black market for donor sperm on social media is rife with predators trying to bully women into sex and sharing graphic descriptions of intercourse in chat groups. Kirsty Marks is one woman who turned to Facebook for a donor due to the sky-high cost of treatment at a private clinic. I think it was around six rounds of IVF that we would have needed to pay for, first of all. Uh, obviously, the, you can't put a price on a child, but that, at that moment in time, was, it was an astronomical amount of money for us to find to, to want a child. After speaking to some friends at the time who was going down the same route, led us to look on, obviously, on sperm donation groups on Facebook. It's kind of a mixed bag, really. There's like Sperm Donation UK, there's the Best Sperm Donors Group. There's obviously ones that, um, obviously, for the likes of Sunny, we really wanted a mixed race donor. So there was actually a Black Sperm Donation Group. You don't want to put, a again, a, a price or a colour on a child, but obviously for me and uh, for my wife, it was important that, that you know the child kind of fit in with our family and obviously I, I was in constant contact with him for several years i wanted to make sure that this guy was the right guy for us he has no um he doesn't ask for photos but he likes them if we get and he doesn't want any involvement and you know even after speaking to some of these you know other males you can just tell by his demeanor that you know he, he's not like these other guys Kirsty says for every genuine donor, there are schools of creeps using donation as a ruse for sex. I still to this day get random guys messaging me saying, are you looking for a donor? And, you know, I do get some quite seedy messages still, which is quite creepy. Um, there is some unsavory guys. There is some guys that basically um, they they say to us that they will they will do artificial insemination and then they're quite scary, they don't do that. They have obviously an excess father to some of them, between 800 and 1600 supposed children in the UK and worldwide, and that to me is quite scary. One fan of the controversial NI method is Joe Donor, an American currently living in Britain who has fathered 160 children across the world. You did say your line of work was essential during the pandemic. Are you classed as a key worker? I am. I'm just as key as uh, Matt Hancock. Well, yeah, natural insemination is the most effective method, and uh, people will often choose that. Uh, some people may want it because they want the child to be conceived in a, a natural way. They want to have that type of human contact involved. Most frequently, women will find me on uh, social media and I find out, you know, where they're located, you know, how they're wishing to proceed, you know, which method they would like to use. It's very hard to get paid for sperm because it's everywhere. It's like, you know, trying to sell coal in Newcastle because if, if a woman's walking down the street and she slows down, someone might throw some sperm at her. I, I think people like me because, well, of course, I produce the babies. And, you know, the children are always quite healthy and intelligent and, uh, uh, well, you'll certainly never have a dull moment if you have one of my children. Though prospective mums would be horrified to read some of the things sperm donors are writing in chat groups online. We see some conversations though in like the sperm bandits where they actually sh share derogatory comments about women. Like one recently, they posted a picture of a woman and said, you can't, you can't get hard because she's 50 years old, but she still needs help. Um, it was that low to degrade a woman. And there was one post, another guy posted, where again, it's one of these prolific names where he basically said, I, I'm, I've been sick at my breakfast um, because it was too female to male and um, transgender women, obviously that still had the reproductive system, but they was recognizing themselves males who wanted a child. And because obviously of that, it physically made him sick, but yet he's one of these prolific donors. And he basically put in a post, quite easily accessible on Facebook, that, yeah, he spew up his breakfast <laughs> because of the fact that they're transgender. But yet he's out there helping women who the majority of them are actually gay, lesbian women. Joe says there are three different methods sperm donors typically use when donating. Yeah, artificial insemination for us usually involves a syringe. 
partial insemination is, you know, where there's more limitations on the amount of contact. So natural insemination might be where there, there's really no limitation. I, I would liken it to like a, a first date. So you might have some more of that type of intimacy, but you know, it's not like a, a, a porno. You're not trying to impress people with your acrobatics and things like that. You know, it's, it's just about doing what we need to do. Uh, quite often people do have a partner and probably the, the biggest issue is um, intimacy. So for example, they may not want me to uh, have a date, you know, like go watch a movie, have dinner, you know, candy and flowers, you know, kissing, all those types of things. So a lot of times people just want to get down to the business, you know, they, they want to do the, the least amount of contact which is necessary to achieve a pregnancy. My, my main concern is the people that I'm helping. You know, I'm not worried about what rubbish uh, my uh, jealous rivals who lack my success. Uh, I'm not worried about what rubbish they're printing. My primary concern is to get the lady pregnant, to do it as quickly as possible, and, you know, to uh, abide by whatever agreements her and I may have had. The cost of IVF in a clinic has pushed thousands of women to unregulated websites and social media, leaving many in a uniquely vulnerable position, which in turn leaves them exposed to coercion. I think some women are so, so desperate to have a child. I don't think they kind of think about the, the ramifications of what they're doing. You see loads of women that will basically say, I need a donation today, or I'll need a donation because it's when they're, they're that desperate, they're like, I need a donation today. And that's a bit reckless because at the end of the day, you can't just have a guy just randomly come around to your flat and just do whatever he needs to do when you just know nothing about this guy. Um, as I said, we, we was, I would rather have waited and waited and waited personally. And I'm sure Nat will agree, we, we wanted to wait for the right person. and. These people are so desperate to, to, to have a child that they, they, you know, they just don't care about the, the, the other half of their child. Or I, I would go too far as to say they've been brainwashed. <laughs> Globetrotting donor Kyle Gordy has made two trips to the UK to donate to British women who find him through Instagram. So typically I donate through artificial insemination within a cup. And then there's also, you know, a more natural approach, which is just uh, sex, essentially. These women don't pay. I mean, I've lost about $30,000. Um, I'm lucky if I get my train ticket covered or hotel room covered. Beyond that, everything else I cover myself. It's hard because I don't have any relationships. I have to abstain. You know, it's a lot of sacrifice to do it, but in the end, it's worth it. A celebrity did contact me in the UK uh, inquiring about trying to use me to have a child. Uh, we did meet up and we signed an NDA though. You know, we're talking and so hopefully uh, we'll be meeting up in the near future to uh, give her a child. I don't think I was ever gonna have any kids on my own if I didn't do this. So I think, um, you know, it's great to see the kids grow up and be able to, you know, help these women out instead of them being forced to use a sperm bank and not really have this option. So regardless whether or not you're in a relationship or not, you know, everyone deserves to have a child.